Please note that the following content is not for children and may contain mild swearing and adult subject matter. Viewer discretion is always advised. Hello everyone, my name is Emily, and today we're going to be testing out some white stuff. And no, I'm not talking about the capability of your little swimmers, I'm talking about white inks. That joke was there for the 14.8% of my audience that is male. Anyway, we are here to test out some white ink, so let's go ahead and jump, jump into, into it. it. Now, I literally bought all the white ink available at my local Dick Blick store. I also realized that some of this white ink is formulated a little bit differently, so we're going to kind of have some subcategories within this test. The first ink that we are testing is the Daler & Rowney FW Acrylic Ink, which has been my tried and true for many years, but I've noticed that recently they have reformulated it, so it's essentially me trying it all over again for the first time. Then we have the Higgins White Ink, which is meant a little bit more for dip pens and things like that. So these two first competitors are going to be a little bit more thin because they are specifically marketed as an ink. These next five quote unquote inks are marketed as opaque watercolor, so their consistency is a lot thicker. First up is the Kuratake White Ink 30, then another Daler and Rowney product, the Pro White. You couldn't just write out prof professional, it just had to be pro, pro white. I, I'm not gonna, I mean, I mean it's, I'm, in this in this political climate, Dale and Rowney. Next up is Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. Then we have probably the most buzzed about product on this list, the Copic Opaque White in its new container. And then we've got the Windsor & Newton White Gouache. Now these last two products are special because they are in pen form. We've got the Sakura Jelly Roll and the Signo White Gel Pen. All these products may be drastically different, but what we're really trying to find out here is what makes the best white highlight. The reason I didn't put acrylic white paint on here is because I don't feel it's a very viable option for anything but an acrylic painting. It's got a lot of texture and gloss, which works great for an acrylic painting, but it doesn't really work well with a very flat watercolor Copic or Prismacolor piece. I'll be testing these highlights in four different ways and looking for a few things. I'll be testing them out on black paper, toned tan paper, watercolor paper with watercolor on it, and Bristol paper with colored pencil on it. In terms of absorbency of the paper, the watercolor paper is the most absorbent, then it appears the black paper is the second most absorbent, then comes the toned tan paper, and then of course the colored pencil is not absorbent at all. I'll be looking out for opacity, smoothness, wetness, and their performance on different mediums. Let's take a look at the Daler & Rowney FW Acrylic Ink. What have they done to my baby? This used to be my swore by, holy grail, tried and true white highlight, and this new formulation is just hot garbage. It performed the absolute worst when on watercolor paper and tone tan. Like it's not even visible. You have to get in close with a monocle in order to be able to see that. And I don't know how many of you own a monocle. Oh! Acceptable. And it barely performed at all on top of the black paper and the colored pencil. I mean, what? is this? We did not start out with a bang. We started out with a <laughs> The opacity was so low, it was almost invisible. The smoothness is kind of unrateable because if you can't see the ink, how can you rate the smoothness? It was too wet and the performance was <laughs> uh, Did I forget to blow a raspberry for like a hot second? It was <laughs> next. Let's go ahead and see if Higgins ink fares any better. Nope. It showed up the worst on the watercolor paper and the black paper. And my theory for why the FW and the Higgins are showing up so poorly on the watercolor paper is because they are way too thin. I meant to mention this for the FW ink, but it's true for the Higgins too. When it's spread out, it's very granular on the dark watercolor paper as well as the black paper. The only reason I consider the Higgins ink performing better on the colored pencil as well as the toned tan is because because 
because you don't see that graininess. I think what's happening is the more absorbent of the papers, which I guess is the black paper and of course the watercolor paper, is absorbing the extra liquid in the ink and leaving the pigment behind. And I'm guessing the binder they used is either really cheap or they've used a lot of filler and that is why we are getting this kind of very bumpy, strange texture that's left behind. Whereas on the tone tan, as well as the colored pencil, it looks like the ink is sitting on top, especially on top of that colored pencil because that colored pencil is wax. So it's creating a barrier between the paper and the ink. And keep in mind, I mixed every single one of these white liquids with a plastic mixer before every application. It's a little messy to do, but it's always going to keep the consistency of the liquid consistent. Opacity was pretty low. Better than the FW, but not saying much. Smoothness was bad because some swatches were very granular. And again, too wet. Performance on medium, poo-poo. Nothing. Bad. I think the colored FW acrylic inks and the Hagen inks are amazing, but their white inks are just bad. A big no from me. So sorry guys, you've been voted off the island. Now we're getting into the opaque watercolor type white highlights. First up is the Kuratake White Ink 30. It performed the worst on the watercolor paper, but it actually performed really well on the black paper, the toned tan paper, as well as on top of colored pencil. And it didn't even perform horribly on the watercolor papers. You can just tell that the extra liquid was absorbed, so it's not as opaque as it was on the other papers. Opacity, I give a four and a half smiling babies out of five. Smoothness, I give a five smiling babies out of five. Wetness, I give a four smiling babies out of five. And performance, on mediums, I give a five smiling babies out of five. Don't worry guys, we still use clapping babies as a way to measure greatness, but I feel like the clapping baby score kind of implies one victor, when in reality, we're going to be breaking down what highlights work best for what mediums. Next up is Dale and Rowney's Professional White. See, that wasn't so hard. Now was it Dale and Rowney? Professional White did not perform as well on the watercolor paper as it did on top of the colored pencil, as well as the tone tan and black paper. I think it's got the same issue as the Kuratake White Ink 30, where that watercolor paper is absorbing that extra liquid, leaving it a little bit less opaque than we would like it to be. But here's something I did not like about the Professional White. It was way too thick. So theoretically, if you were working on watercolor paper with the White Ink 30, you could add a second coat and it wouldn't add too much texture to your piece. But with the Pro White, because it's so thick and leaves a lot of texture behind, if you were to add a second coat, it would be a little distracting because it would add even more texture on top of the already textured first layer. Now you can add water to any of these opaque watercolor type white highlights and thin them out, but in the case of the professional white on the watercolor paper, I wouldn't recommend it because it's going to reduce the opacity even further. So we can see that both the Kuratake and the professional white fare better on less absorbent papers. So for Daler and Rowney's professional white, I give them a four out of five smiling babies on opacity, a three out of five smiling babies on smoothness, a three out of five smiling babies on wetness, and a four out of five smiling babies on performance on different mediums. I'll make my final call on what white highlight is best for what medium at the very end of the video. Moving on to Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. It looks like it performed really poorly on the colored pencil, but really well on the watercolor paper, the tone tan, and the black paper. Bleed Proof White really, really impressed me with everything except for when I tried to apply it to the colored pencil. Now I knew this was going to happen at some point with some brand of white highlight, but I didn't really expect Bleed Proof White to do this to me. I did the colored pencil test last on all of my white highlights and I was so impressed with Bleed Proof White, I was gonna crown him daddy. But then he did this to me and I'm offended. It looks like the Bleed Proof... <laughs> Bleed Proof... <laughs> No breeding. It looks like the Bleed Proof White fares better with more absorbent papers than its predecessors. So sorry, colored pencil peeps. I just don't think Bleed Proof White is ready to be your daddy. But watercolor people and Copic marker people, 
You better watch out. He's doing he's doing pretty good on these absorbent papers over here. So for Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White, I give it a 5 out of 5 smiling babies on opacity, a 5 out of 5 smiling babies on smoothness, a 5 out of 5 smiling babies on wetness, and a four out of five smiling babies on performance on different mediums. And now we're moving on to Copic's famous opaque white. Now I have it in the new container. It used to be available in just a regular little jar with no applicator. Now it's my understanding that you can still get the plain jar, but they're trying to phase that out and phase this one in. But I feel like most artists would appreciate if both versions were available. I say this because the new bottle is not something that I prefer. In fact, in fact, it really, really irritated me more often than not. It was frustrating because I felt like it really detracted away from my ability to rate the product itself because the jar that the product came in was so infuriating. Now I was able to pour out some of the product and use a different brush to apply it, but even that was really difficult. The jar is shaped in a way that only allows the applicator that it comes with to go in and out. It's got a very small opening, so other brushes typically don't fit through that small opening and trying to pour product out of that very small opening is a mess. Now, similarly to the Bleed Proof White, it performed well on every surface except for on top of the colored pencil, so that's out. Now, when dry, it did leave a little bit of texture, um, but not in a bad way at all. Very opaque, very flat, matte. You can't see any brush strokes in it. It looks a lot nicer than the Professional White. But this product dries very, very quickly, so on that really skinny applicator, you have to keep going in and dipping and dipping and then it starts to kind of create a coating on this applicator so it makes it even more difficult to lay down an even layer. It's just, it was very frustrating. Even after pouring it out and using it on a regular brush, it was still drying so quickly that it was making the tip of my brush stiff and I kept having to rinse my brush and then get more product but then the product on the plate would dry so I'd have to dump more out. It was just a lot of extra steps that I didn't need to take for any of the other whites. So Copic's Opaque White gets a 5 out of 5 smiling babies for opacity, a 4 out of 5 smiling babies for smoothness, a 2 out of 5 smiling babies for wetness, and 4 out of 5 smiling babies for performance on different mediums. Let's move on to talking about white gouache, Windsor and Newton's white gouache to be specific. The gouache seemed to perform really well pretty much on all the papers, so it seemed to perform pretty consistently across the board. However, consistent doesn't always equal good. The gouache is most opaque on top of the watercolor as well as on the toned tan paper and lacks in opacity on top of the colored pencil as well as the black paper. I'd say the gouache in general is pretty good, but still leaning on the average side. So Windsor & Newton's White Gouache gets a 4 out of 5 smiling babies for opacity, 4 out of 5 smiling babies for smoothness, 3 out of 5 smiling babies for wetness, and a 5 out of 5 smiling babies for performance on different mediums. Because like I said before, it very clearly performed very well on all the paper mediums that I tried it on. Now very quickly, I'm going to rate the Jelly Roll pen and the Signo pen together. Unfortunately, the Jelly Roll did underperform pretty much across the board, except for on the black paper. Whereas the Signo performed pretty well across all paper mediums. For the Jelly Roll pen, I give 3 out of 5 smiling babies for opacity, a 2 out of 5 smiling babies for smoothness because you really have to work the pen, go over your line a few times to get a nice smooth ink flow going, 3 out of 5 smiling babies for wetness, and a 2 out of 5 smiling babies for performance on different mediums. For the Signo Gel pen, I give it a 4 out of 5 smiling babies for opacity, a 3 out of 5 smiling babies for smoothness because, like the Jelly Roll, you do have to work the pen a little bit to get a nice smooth ink flow going, a 4 out of 5 smiling babies for wetness, and a 5 out of 5 smiling babies for performance on different mediums. That concludes the rating portion of this review, and now on to my personal recommendations. If you want a great white highlight on the go, something to throw in your bag so you don't have to worry about making a mess with any of the inks or gouaches, I definitely recommend the Signo gel pen. It has always been a love of mine. I have used it for years and years and years. It is always in my travel art kit, always, always, always. 
and even though I have moved on and found wider highlights, I have never found a wider pen. The only downside to this pen is that you're going to want to buy several of them, not just one, because they do get clogged rather easy. They're also a little bit hard to find. I've pretty much only been able to order them online, especially in the one millimeter thickness, and that's the one that I do recommend. The Angelic Signo White Gel Pen is nowhere near as good. So if you're looking for something to give you great white highlights on the go with a very, very little to no mess, the Signo White Gel Pen is your man pen thing. Now for our runner up in the ink slash gouache category. And the runner up is the Kuratake White Ink 30. The only reason that the Kuratake did not win is because this is definitely a two coat kind of white highlight. And when you add that second coat, you can definitely see really prominent brush strokes. Wow. Compensating much? But yeah, when you add that second coat, the texture is a little bit not so pleasing, but other than that, it really performed well across the board. The only thing is that when you use it on really absorbent paper, like watercolor paper, it kind of tends to sink into the page a little bit, get absorbed, and when it does that, it becomes a little bit less opaque. So not ideal for watercolor paper, um, but still works really well, still looks really nice. And our winner is Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Bleed Proof White. Bleed Proof White performed incredibly across the board. The only issue was when it was applied on top of the colored pencil. That waxy surface prevented it from being absorbed into the paper, kind of the opposite problem of the Kuratake. So the edges of the mark that I laid down are a little bit crackly. And again, I'm assuming it's because of that wax layer preventing the ink from absorbing into the page. It performed incredibly on watercolor paper. So hey, maybe I'm just rating this number one because I'm a watercolor artist and it looks great on watercolor paper. Perhaps if you are a colored pencil artist, Kuratake's White Ink 30 would be your number one because Kuratake looks great on top of that colored pencil. Realistically, the only reason the Bleed Proof White is number one is because I only need to apply one coat to get a flat, matte, white application. If I could just apply one coat of the White Ink 30, they would be neck and neck, basically indistinguishable from one another other than one's good on watercolor paper and one's good over colored pencil. Anyway guys, that was my review of every single white highlight that I could possibly get my hands on at this point. If you have any other recommendations for good white highlights, please let me know down in the comments. But anyway, I hope this video gave you guys some clarity on what are some of the absolute best white highlights available out there. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to stay out of trouble. See you guys later.